Okay. Let me continue here, guys, uh, with this one that we couldn't do last time because we didn't have enough knowledge of section 6.1. He gives me the sample mean X bar, which is 57.4. You're going to have a question like that on the homework online. And the margin of error E is 4.5, and he wants you to write the confidence interval. Can you guys tell me what the confidence interval is? That should be an easy question. It's not a calculator question because he gives you everything. He gives you E. So what would be the confidence interval here? Yes? You already have X bar and you already have E. So what do you do with those two values right here? You subtract the... Subtract them first. So it's 52.9. Yeah, minus 4.5. Let me write it down. And this one will be uh 57.4 plus 4.5 and then the mean will be guys between 57.4 minus 4.5 will be what 52.9 52.9 and then uh, this one will be 61. Point. you're done that's it okay now, guys, if you have the confidence interval, that's going to make things easier and a way around, you know, just even using the formula for the margin of error. If you have the confidence interval and he asks you to find the margin of error E, here's what you do. You subtract the lower bound from the upper bound and then you divide by two. So this is the lower bound. This is the upper bound. To find E, if you have the interval, it will be upper bound minus lower bound divided by 2. So can you help me find E here? It will be 178 minus 167 divided by 2. 172.5. Uh, no, it's going to be a lot less than that. 178 minus 167, it's going to be 11, correct? And then divide by 2. Oh, you added them. No, it's a subtraction. Five. Oh, you know what? I did get the 5.5, .5, but I don't know. I got it in a weird way. Yeah, it's 5.5. <laughs> All right, guys. So this is how to find the uh, margin of error if you have the interval. If you don't have the interval, you have to do the work just like I showed you earlier. But if you have the interval, you just subtract the two values and then divide by two, you get the margin of error. Okay, let me add one more question here in five. Find the sample mean X bar. Any guess, guys, if you have the margin, if you have the interval and he asks you to find X bar, how do you find X bar? What do you do? X bar is the value that sits, you know, right in the middle of the interval. We did some practice. Uh, Was that finding the midpoint of the two? Exactly, exactly. It's the midpoint. So X bar, guys, will be the lower bound plus the upper bound divided by two. In our case will be 178 plus 167 divided by two guys. So when you do your homework today, and if there is, he gives you the interval, ask you to find the sample mean X bar, just add up the two values and divide by two. If he gives you an interval and asks you to find the margin of error, subtract the two values and divide by two. So that will be, uh, what, 172.5. All right. We're going to do this together now. Find the critical value for a 94% confidence interval. Okay, get your calculator ready, guys. It's going to be inverse norm. Okay, who would like to help me out here and tell me what's the area to the left right here? It's a 94%. So minus 0 0.94. Okay, so that will be what? 
divided by two. What's six percent divided by two, guys? Three percent. Three percent. Okay. I'm gonna pause for 20 seconds to allow students to do this because you need to know how to do it yourself, guys. I am assuming that you are doing it yourself at the moment. So, yep. So, so for six, the inverse norm 0 0.0301 was 1.88. Actually, it's negative, but you switched to positive. And for 98%, as I said, you subtract from 100%, divide by two, you get 1%. This is your area to the left, 0 0.01, comma, 0, comma, 1. And you are correct, it'll give you 2.33. Okay, Who, we discussed this before, guys. What happens to the confidence interval when we increase the confidence level? Does it shrink or widen? It widens. It widens. You see, increase in the confidence level comes at a cost. Your choices are going to be a lot more right now. Actually, we would love our choices to be limited so we know exactly what the true value is. But when you have so many choices, then the true value will get lost. You know, we wouldn't be able to tell exactly what the true value is. And uh, let me give you an example why it's good to have a lower confidence level. If I tell you guys that your proportion, your percent of the test score, or your progress in my class is going to be between 60% and 80%, am I telling you that you're going to be passing the class, or you're going to be failing the class, or I'm saying both here? If I say your percent, is gonna be your overall percent is gonna be between 60 and 80. What can you get out of this? Uh, you can either pass or fail. Exactly. Because when I say your percent is between, your, your overall percentage is between 60 and 80. If it is 63%, that's a fail, that's a D. But if it is a 75%, which is inside the interval, that's a C. So that doesn't, because the interval is big from 60 to 80. But now listen to this, guys. If I tell you your overall percentage is going to be between 72% and 81%, what can you conclude out of this, guys? You're going to pass. You're going to pass. See, I gave you a smaller interval where all the values are over 70%. You made this conclusion. So it's always nicer to have a smaller interval because you can tell you not just really what's going to happen. But when I tell you your grade is gonna be between 0% and 100%, look how big this interval is. You cannot conclude anything. There is nothing you can conclude. But what would make an interval smaller? If you increase the sample size, guys, that will help the interval become smaller and smaller and uh, narrower. So the larger the sample size, the better the interval is. All right. Let's go to the next page. All right, we did this page right here. So we're gonna do, go to the next page. All right, right here. All right. Let me do this exercise, guys. And I'll show you how, where this formula came from. And that's formula you don't need to memorize, guys, will be available to you. So let me read the example. Uh, this one, this particular example, guys, is not a confidence interval uh, example, so you wouldn't be able to use a calculator. You just have to use the formula and do the math properly. An insurance company is trying to estimate the average number of sick days that full-time food service workers use per year. A pilot study found that the standard deviation to be 2.5 days. So the population standard deviation sigma is 2.5 days. How large a sample must be? You see here, he's asking you about the sample size, N. How large a sample must be? So he wants N. If the company wants to be 95% confident, so the confidence level, guys, is 95%. 
if the company wants to be 95% confident of getting an interval that contains the true mean with a maximum error of one day. Do you know guys what uh, the one day represent? What simple is one day? Is that E? That's E. Okay. So now we have this formula for E guys. That's the formula that I had in the previous page. If you try to play with the algebra here and move things around, I'm not going to go uh, and spend time on this, guys. This formula, if I square both sides and solve for n, this formula will become that. It will become n equals zc times sigma divided by e squared. So if he asks you for the sample size, guys, you will need to use this formula. You will need zc, you will need sigma, and you will need e in order to find n. Let's see if he gave me what, uh, what we need. Did he give me sigma? Yes, he did. Look, this is sigma, and I have sigma. Did he give me ZC? No, he gave me the confidence level, but from the confidence level, I can find Z 95%, which you guys you just did to practice exercise with me earlier. Did he give me E? Yes. So all you need to do, guys, is to find ZC at 95%. Would someone remind me how to find Z at 0 0.95? It's going to be inverse norm. Okay, I'm waiting, guys. What do we do with the 95%? One minus Subtracted from what? One. One, which is going to give you 5%. And what do you do with the 5%? Don't forget to what? Divided by? Two. Two. Okay, so that will be 0 0.025, guys. Zero, 01. And actually, guys, for 95%, if you don't want to do the work, it's already given to you right here. Look, because it's a very common number. I would memorize them, guys. That will make your life in this chapter, you know, just a much, go a much better and faster if you memorize those three values. At 90% confidence, the critical value is 1.645. At 95% confidence, at, it's a 1.96. And at 99%, it's 2.5. Seven five. So I would try to memorize those values. Uh, then you wouldn't have to go back, you know, just redo the formula. But it doesn't mean that he always give you 90, 95, 98. Sometimes he will say 98% confidence level, so you have to do the work. But for 90, 95 guys, and 99, try to memorize those three numbers. You see, I skipped the 80. There is not much 80% confidence level, but these three are very common ones right here. So you know what the answer is going to be. It's going to be a negative 1.96 if you use your calculator. So I'm going to put 1.96 here. All right, so let's find N. It will be ZC 1.96 times 2.5 divided by E, which is 1. And don't forget, we need to square it. And let's do the math. There you go. Uh, 1.96 times 2.5. I'll tell you a common mistake, guys, the students do on the test when you test them on this question, they forget to square. Divide by one, well, it's not gonna change anything, so I got this. A lot of students, you know, just they stop here, but you still need to square it. And here's how we square it, guys, watch. Square right here and put two. Or you can put 4.9 times 4.9, 24.01. When you find the sample size, guys, the minimum sample size, you must round up always. I got the 24 and a little bit, but there is no uh, 24 and a little bit of a person. It has to be a whole number always, so you need to round it up. If I round 24.0 up, guys, what would be the uh, answer? 25. 25. So sample size must be 25 or more.
minimum of 25. He says, so it has to be at least uh, 25. Uh, when I do this as a multiple choice, I put 24.01 as an answer and students should not select this answer because you cannot have a sample size number of people as a fraction, guys, or as a decimal. It has to be a whole number. Always round up. The only case when you don't round up if you get the whole number here. It's very unlikely to get the whole number, so just round up most of the time. Any questions? Okay, we're gonna do this uh, exercise together in the book. So I had, and have your calculator ready guys, let's do it together in section 6.1. Just to show you, this section is very uh, straightforward and it's number 36 on page 306, which I'm gonna show you right here. Okay. It's a page 306 in your e-text online. In 36 randomly selected seawater samples. So write down guys, N is 36. The mean sodium chloride concentration was 23 cubic centimeters per cubic meters. That's X bar. So X bar is 23. Assume that the population standard deviation is 6.7. So sigma is 6.7 per cubic meter. And what is the question? You don't see the question, but it's right above. In exercises 35 and 36, you are given the sample mean, the population standard deviation. Use this information to construct a 90% and 95% confidence interval for the population mean. Interpret the results and compare the width of the interval. So let's do this uh, exercise together. So again, guys, N is 36, X bar is 23, and Sigma is 6.7. And he wants a 90% confidence interval and a 95% confidence interval. We're gonna do both using technology, the TI-84 uh, calculator. So I'm gonna move this aside, put this aside and do it uh, along with you. But I would I'd like you to help me guys and use your calculator to get those intervals. So let me get a blank page and uh, just do this together. There you go. So it's page 306. Page 306, and it was number 36. So he gave me a sample size of 36 with X bar equal 23, with Sigma equal 6.7. 6.7, and he wants 90% confidence interval. Ninety-five percent confidence interval. He says, compare the results. We already know, guys, that the uh, interval in the ninety-five percent is going to be wider than the ninety percent because it's a higher confidence level. So this is an answer you should know already, even without doing uh, the work. Okay, now let's do uh, this. So we go to stat. Tests, and then we go to Z interval. And I'm gonna give you a minute, guys, to do this, but the Z interval, remember, guys, we only use Z interval when he gives us population standard deviation. So let's take a minute find me the 90% confidence interval and then go back and do the 95% and write them down. So I'm gonna pause the recording for one minute here. Okay, 
Look how simple it is. To do this. So I'm gonna turn the calculator on. Stat tests Z interval. Okay, sigma is uh, 6.7, X bar is 23, N is 36, and confidence, let's do the 90% first. Okay, I got mean between, let's round to two decimal places, so 21.16 and 24.84. Next one, 95. You go stat, tests, Z interval, sigma is 6.7, X bar is 23. The only thing I need to change is this is 0 0.95. And watch guys, 20.81. And 25.19. Do you guys notice that the lower is even lower when you do 95%? And the upper is given even higher when you do a 95%. That's why this 95% interval is wider. Okay. Now he asked us to interpret our answer in words. So this is what you write, guys, for the 95%. With 90% confidence. Now you're writing for a reader. We can say, or you can say, you put we can say or you can say, that the true mean, Uh, the true mean, what was the problem about? The true mean sodium chloride concentration. Concentration was between, you just copy and paste the numbers guys, 21.16 and 24.84, and I'll copy the unit from the book. Cubic centimeter per cubic meter. So just copy and paste. And that concludes the question. This is very much it, guys, in this section that what you need uh, to know is to find confidence interval for the population mean given this sample size, given X bar, given sigma, the population standard deviation, and given the confidence level. Do you guys have any questions here? Uh, when writing the answer, you wouldn't need to include the 95% in it? Oh yeah, if, if, if for the second part, you have to do another, because these are two questions in one, actually, you won't see in the in the book. You're not going to see a lot of problem where he asks you 90 and 95 percent at the same time. But these are two question in one, so you can write with 95 percent confidence. That's a different statement. You can say that the true mean, the true guys means the population mean, is between. And now I'm gonna to have to copy those numbers. 20.81 and 25.19 cubic centimeter in cubic meter. Per cubic meter. This question, guys, is an excellent summary of the entire section. This is pretty much it. What we're gonna do in the next section, guys, he doesn't give us the population standard deviation, but instead of the population standard deviation, he gives us the sample standard deviation, S, which is actually the more common case in real life. Because in real life, we don't know much about the population. We know information from the sample. So 6.2, I would say, is a lot more important section than 6.1.
but you're gonna notice guys because you learn six uh, six section 6.1 you're gonna see how uh, straightforward this section is we're just gonna continue using the calculator but different formulas so let me introduce section 6.2 to you and then we'll go and do problems right away so all right let's get this ready a distribution called T distribution, not Z distribution. And I want to explain it, I'll show it to you, show you a visual of this distribution. Okay. Where do you see the difference between the two? It's higher above the line. Exactly. The curves don't come closer. All right. My microphone stopped working for a second. Now it is working. So the difference goes, look guys at the tails. They're a bit thicker than the Z distribution and the tails will become less and less thicker as the sample size increases. For example, let's say n is 10 in this one, the sample size is 10. If I make the sample size 20, you will get something like that. And I'm gonna show you that in the book. Now, if you make the sample size as 30 or higher, it will become very much the normal distribution, the Z distribution. So the thickness of the tails at the bottom, it changes with the sample size. The larger the sample size, the less thicker the tails uh, are. The smaller the sample size, the wider, you know, just the gap between the horizontal line and the curve. The area under this curve, guys, is the same as this one. It's 100%. The total area under the curve is 100%. The value in the middle is the value of the mean, which is uh, zero. So it's the same thing as the Z distribution. But the only difference, guys, that the tails of the distribution, they're not as close as uh, to the horizontal line as the tails of the Z distribution. Let me show you a visual from the book. Uh, for this distribution, guys. Here you go. You only need to know about it once, and then when I start mentioning uh, the T distribution. Here it, here it is, right here. Okay. He puts, he doesn't put sample size, he puts degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom, guys, means sample size minus one. So if the degrees of freedom is two here, it means the sample size was three. If the degrees of freedom was five here, the sample size was six, and so on and so forth. And look, the blue line is the standard normal curve, which is the Z distribution. And you notice as you increase the sample size, the curve will become closer and closer being, you know, just like, you know, the Z curve in the previous distribution that we learned. And the mean, median, and mode of the distribution are all equal to zero. The T distribution is bell-shaped just like the Z distribution. Total area under the curve is one. The tails in the T distribution are a bit thicker than those in the standard normal distribution, as I told you guys. And the degrees of freedom, which is called the sample size minus one. We use degrees of freedom, sample size minus one. And here's how it looks like. So when the population standard deviation, guys, is not given, we must use what we call the T distribution. And I'm going to take you right, you know, just into uh, an example and how to work this out. You're not going to see a big difference between the previous section and this section. All right. So we will be using a T distribution here. Okay, let me go back to this is my hand out for section six and two. Okay, here's an example, guys. 
You wish to estimate the average numbers of housing starts in all large cities in the United States. You have a random sample of 25. So what does 25 mean, guys, to us as a simple? What simple does 25 represent? N. N. This is what's important to you guys to know how to interpret, you know, those words into simples because the calculator will ask you to input simples there. So that's N. And obtain the number of housing starts in each. The sample mean is 525. What is that, guys? Can a student tell me what simple is that? X bar. X bar, yes. Say it with loud voice. That is X bar. With a sample standard deviation of 40. Sigma. Not sigma. What did he say here? With a sample standard deviation. That is a standard oh, deviation, but that's not sigma. What do we call the sample standard deviation? S. Yes. Remember, guys, we're in chapter two, we introduced two uh, notations. One is called sigma for population standard deviation, and one called S for a sample standard deviation. S is generated from the sample, so this is S, and there is a big difference between the two guys, so that's S. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean. Okay, let me walk you through this. So N is 25, let me write them down. Uh, X bar is 525, S is 40, and he wants what? 95% confidence interval. So C is 95%. Okay. Please pay attention to me, guys, doing this two ways, by calculator and by hand. And then I'm going to do it by hand first, but then I'll show you how to use the calculator. In the previous section, we did this. It's going to be the same. And E in the previous section was this formula. OK, now I would like one student to help me change some of the notations here to reflect on this section, 6.2. What would Z changes to, guys, in this section? T. To, to what variable? What did you say? Is it T? Yes. That will become a T. See, same formula, nothing changes T, C. And what would sigma changes to? S. 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 Do you notice, guys, the formula remain the same. It's just different notations, different location, different variables. So it is T, C, S over square root of N. S is given, guys, just like in the previous section, sigma was given. N is given. All I need to show you guys is how to find TC, which is the critical value. What is TC, guys, is like this, just like we did before, watch. 95%. This is TC. Did you notice, guys, the curve that I make is a bit, uh, thicker curve just to show that we are working with the T distribution here. So again, guys, the area here will be, what would be the area here? Can you guys help me? Isn't it 100%? 100% minus the 95% will be what? 5% and split it up, same thing. So this will be a 2.5%. And this one will be a 2.5%. Now, how do you find this critical value? There are two ways. We can use the calculator or we can use a table. And you might like the table because it's very easy to use the table. And let me show you this table, guys. I will communicate this table to you as soon as we finish the lesson today. Okay. Do you see, guys, the title? What does it say here? Table 5 what? T distribution, so this is section 6.2. T distribution, okay. What's the confidence level, guys? 
95. Watch me. Okay, sample size is 25. I say the degrees of freedom is the sample size minus one. So what would be the degrees of freedom be? 24. 24. Watch, guys. Look, this is 95 right here. And let me look for 24. It's right here. And uh, I'm going to put the menu bar away from me here. And there we go. 95. There we go, right here. 2.064. See how easy it is to the, use the table? Just pick the confidence level and pick the degrees of freedom and see where the vertical line and the horizontal line meet. It's 2.064. When you do your homework problems in section 6.2, guys, this table is going to pop up. You can use it. Or you can use the calculator, which I'm going to show you in a second how to use the calculator. Okay, so it's 2.064. So TC is 2.064 using table five. Okay, let's find E. 2.064 guys, times the standard deviation S, which is 40, divided by square root of 25. Okay, let's do the math. And we shall have the interval, 2.064 times 40, divided square root of 25, guys, is 5. So I guess 16.51. And your mean is between x bar minus e same formula as in section 6.1 no changes guys x bar plus e it's the same uh, formula for the mean mean is x bar minus e is 525 minus 16.51 and 525 plus 16.51 and we're almost there I did the work out for this and the handout, but I'm just showing you how to do the details here. Minus 16.51, 508.49. And then if you add it, it would be 541.51. This is the confidence interval, guys. So the mean is between 508.49 and 541.51. If you want to write the conclusion, you say with 95% confidence, we can conclude that the true mean is between 508.49 and 541.51. Now I think you're curious to see how to use calculator to do this one. It, whether you use calculator or not, you always need to be aware of those and you need to state them properly. So we're going to need those for the calculator. Okay. Let me go to the screen, the stat test. Can you guys tell me which one is going to be that we're going to be using to find the interval? Mm -hmm. Any ideas? Look at, look at the screen. T interval. T interval. Exactly. You see why there is a T interval, guys? The T interval is dedicated for this section, 6.2, when sigma is not known and instead S is given. Exactly. Before even I get to this, guys, let me tell you why, what's the main major problem on, in this chapter with students sometimes not passing the test. You give them a question from this section, they come and see Z interval, they pick it up right away and use it, and they end up using the right, wrong formula to find the interval. So you need to tell the difference between a Z interval and T interval. Z interval can be used when sigma is known, T interval can be used when S is given instead of sigma. So let me go to T interval. Okay, so X bar is 525, S is 40, N is 25, and confidence level is 0 0.95, and I should get the exact same answer, guys, watch. 548.49, 541.51. See? Right here. Mr. Bazi, how do we clear clear the calculator? 
from right. you cannot clear no you cannot clear those t yeah. interval you just type over them what if you're getting like error it shouldn't whenever you go down shouldn't be the case uh if you get an error that means yeah you put a number uh, that the calculator did not accept it just try try to retype you know the whole thing and it should work I mean, there's always an option to reset your calculator, guys. In the worst scenario, let me show you. That's uh, probably that's a good segue yeah. to this. Uh, you can always reset your calculator and watch how. Second, and then the plus sign. And then you see what it says, reset and number seven. And yeah. defaults. And again, reset. It will warn you before you do it because uh, you'll be okay. losing everything. And then um, see, now your calculator is cleared. It's okay. So that's an option for everyone. Yeah, sometimes you could be doing some work guys at night and then something goes wrong. Well, the best thing is just reset this calculator. All right. So now let's continue with this section. We're going to do this exercise together. Example two. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean. Assume that the population has a normal distribution. A sample of 20 part-time workers. So N is 20, guys. Has a mean annual earnings of three thousand one hundred twenty dollars. Who can tell me what variable do I use here? What's X mean? bar. X bar. Very good. With a standard deviation of six hundred seventy-seven. He didn't say population standard deviation. If he doesn't say population standard deviation, it's not called sigma. It's called S. So that's S, guys. And he wants 95% confidence interval. Okay. Let's do this by hand, guys, and then we will use the calculator. So list the given value. Sample size is 20. Sample mean is 3,120. Sample standard deviation, which is 677. And confidence level is 95. And this is N. And this is X bar, guys. Okay. First of all, we're going to find the critical value using table five. So I'm going to project table five, guys, on the screen. And uh, you tell me. So you need degrees of freedom, which is 20 minus 119 when you look up the value. And we need the confidence level, which is 95. So please, guys, don't wait for me until I give you the answer. Look it up with me. So look for 19 and 95 and tell me what the answer is. Two point zero nine three. Two point zero nine three. Does everyone agree, guys? Look, 95, 19, 2.093. You are correct. Margin of error, it will be TC 2.093 times S 677 divided by square root of 20. And you're done. Once you find the margin of error, subtract it from the mean and add it to the mean and that should give you the answer. No one asked me how to find the critical value TC using the calculator. You can do it on the calculator without using the table, which I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, all right, so we have stat, tests, T interval. X bar is what? 3,120. Oh, what I'm doing, we're doing it by hand. Not yet. Sorry. 2.093 times 677 divided by 
And for the square root, guys, you enter the second key, square root, and then put 20 there. 316.84. And the way I organized this guided notebook, guys, step by step to show you what's going on here. So now state the interval. Uh, 3,120 minus 300. Can a student do the math for us? 0. 0.84 and 3,120 plus. So mean will be between. Uh, 3,438.84. And here you just have to subtract 3,120 minus 318.84. How do you interpret your answer in words? With 95% confidence, we can say that the true mean is between those two numbers. Uh, which is $2,801.16 and $3,438.84. Any questions, guys? Okay, let's do this on the calculator. If he doesn't tell you, show the margin of error, etc., you can do it right away on the calculator and watch, guys. Go to stat. Go to tests, go to eight, and enter X bar, which is 3,120. Is it? Yeah. Uh, so S is 677, N is 20, sample size, and confidence level is 95. Here you go, guys. It's exactly the same answer that uh, we got. So using TI-84, uh, go to stat, tests, and then T interval. You guys can walk out of today's session knowing the difference between T and Z. I think that would be good. That's going to help you a lot. Okay. Well, the numbers are slightly different um, when it comes to the sense when you do it with the calculator versus by hand. Yeah, it didn't. Yeah, we did better with the doing. Yes, that's that's okay. You, and you know, when you do your work in my math lab, we will take this into consideration. It will but because we did it by hand, we got probably more accurate uh, answer. But, but if you round, but did you notice, if you round this to the nearest tenth, it's going to be 0 0.8. And if you round this one to the nearest tenth, it's going to be 0 0.2. So it will be exactly the same answer. OK. Let's do number three together, guys. And then I'll show you how to find TC using the calculator after us. Publish the amount of nicotine found. You're cutting off, Mr. Yeah. Your microphone is acting funny. What about now, guys? I can hear you. Good. All right, let's continue. So, example three, to help consumers assess the risk they're taking the Food and Drug Administration FDA published the amount of nicotine found in all commercial brands of cigarettes. A new cigarette has recently been marketed. The FDA tests on the cigarette gave a mean nicotine content of 26.1 milligrams, so X bar. And standard deviation of 2.9. What is this simple, guys? S. S. 
if you're debating between S and Sigma, guys, if he doesn't say population standard deviation, put an S, it can't be Sigma. It is an S. And that's gonna make a big difference because if it is an S, you're gonna be using T interval. If it is an uh, Sigma, you're gonna be using Z interval. There is a big difference between the two guys. Uh, 2.9 milligrams for a sample of N equals nine. So I put N equals nine here. The FDA claims that the mean nicotine contents exceeds 28.9 milligram for this brand of cigarettes. And their stated re reliability is 90%. So they did, you know, just the study at 90% confidence. What they're accusing, you know, just this tobacco company, they're saying that the amount of nicotine exceeds 28.9 milligrams, which is the cutoff acceptable number of nicotine in the cigarettes. The tobacco company can get in trouble, you know, just if this is the case. They're asking us if we agree with the claim of the FDA. In order, guys, to agree or disagree, guess what we need to find first? We need to find the, never mind, actually. Okay, how would you prove whether this claim is valid or not? We can find a confidence interval for the amount of nicotine in this new cigarette and see, and then we can use this interval to determine whether the FDA is right or wrong. So the first thing guys is, we're gonna find a 90% confidence interval. You tell me why 90% because the FDA says their stated reliability is 90%. So they're 90% confidence of, their, uh, of what they say, only 90%. So the sample size guys, and the reason why I put this exercise there to show you how we can use confidence interval in real life, how the FDA uses uh, confidence intervals. So N is nine. Sample mean X bar, guys, they say is 26.1. Standard deviation S is 2.9. And the confidence level is 90. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do this with the calculator right away. So use TI-84 and T interval. So let's do this together, guys, please, to find the uh, interval here. Stat, tests, and I'm gonna put, I'll make this visible to you guys. You input, and we're gonna go to T interval. Okay, X bar, 26.1, S, 2.9, N is nine. This is a small sample size, which is not good anyway, but that's what we have, 0 0.90. Any question, guys, before, before I hit calculate? That's what we have. Enter. Okay, so I got 24.3 and 27.9. I'll write them down on the next page. If you wanna try to do this by hand later, feel free, but the interval is 24.3. Oh, I gave you an option to use a calculator here and 27.9. Okay, let me show you what the FDA says and now we're gonna tell me if they're right or wrong. Not everything the FDA says, you know, is correct. It could be correct, could be wrong. This is what they say. They say that the mean nicotine contents exceeds 28.9 milligram in this new cigarettes. What do you think? Is their claim valid? No. Why? Because we could say with 90% confidence that it falls between 24.3 and 27. Exactly. Do you guys see the rest of you guys? Do you see the point? See the, what the, how good the confidence interval can be here? The confidence interval tells us that the mean cannot go more than 27.9, but the FDA says it's more than 28.9. That's not true. 
And it's not true because the 28.9 is not inside the interval. So uh, I don't agree with the FDA claim because according to the interval, the amount of nicotine cannot exceed 27.9 milligram. And the FDA, it says it goes beyond 28.9. That's not true. All right, guys. One more. Now what I'd like you to do, he gives you a data set. We don't have a summary of the data. We don't have the mean and the standard deviation. We have the actual data set and you are asked to find a confidence interval for the mean. So your first task, guys, is to put this data in L1. Once you see a data set, guys, right away, go to L1 and put the data in there. So let's do it together, first of all. Stat, here's how you do it. You go to stat, edit, and start entering data. You see, I reset my calculator so it's nice and clean here. And put two, 3.2, uh, 1.8, 2.9, 0.9, 4. Then we'll read the problem after we input the data. I mean, whether we read it or not, we have to do that. 2.9, 3.6, 0 0.8. All right, let's read the problem. The grade point average for 10 randomly selected junior college students are listed below. Assume that the grade point averages are normally distributed because he gave me a small sample size, he has to give me a normal population. If the sample size is less than 30, we have to have a population that's spell-shaped. If it is more than 30, it doesn't matter. Find a 98% confidence interval for the true mean. Round your answers to the nearest hundredth. Okay. What's the next step, guys? Go to stat, tests, t-test, at the interval, I'm sorry. Okay, if he gives you a data set, guys, it's a T interval right away. So just make an assumption. You have a data set, it's a T interval. It didn't give me the population standard deviation. So enter. Okay. Any suggestions, guys, for the input? I have to change something here now. What do I do? It won't work if I keep it the same as it is because it's asking me for X bar and S. You gotta move it to data. Move it to data here. There you go. And then it's asking me for the list. My list is in L1, which is good. Don't change the frequency, guys. It's always at one, set at one. So do not change this at all. And what does he want? A 90%, 98% confidence interval. So right here, guys, put 0 0.98. I'll keep the screen for a few seconds so you can grasp the screen and see how it's done. And notice, guys, we changed the input to data here. My list is in L1. If you put it in L2, just choose L2. But frequency, guys, take a note that you will never change this one. 0 0.98, calculate. So let me write down what we did here. Input, data, list, L1, frequency, one, confidence level, 98, and then calculate. So you guys, if uh, you revisit later, you know in the notes uh, what to do. And uh, let's uh, hit enter, calculate. Okay, 1.5 uh, to the nearest hundredth. 
So your mean is going to be 1.55, watch guys, and 3.53. This is the GPA. Inter interpret in words with 98% confidence. We can say that the true uh, grade point average is between 1.55 and 3.53. Does that mean that anything outside of that is considered an outlier? Not for this interval, no. But there wouldn't be the yes, the, very much. Yeah, if you have if you have a four, kind of like you know, just that this is an extreme here. I know you see the four point zero in there. Now, what what does this interval tell us? Be honest with you guys, it doesn't tell us uh, much because the sample size was small, look how wide the interval. If, if, I, if I ask based on this interval, do you think the class is passing on average, guys? You cannot say the class is passing because less than two is not passing and it starts at 1.55. So the average of the class could be 1.75. That means it, it's not passing. And the average of the class could be 2.5, which is inside this interval, could be a C level. Also, the average of the class could be a 3.2, which is also inside this interval. So you see when the sample size is small, your interval will be very wide. And when it is very wide, you really can't say much, you know, just about it. And that's, that's an example of that. Not only we have a small sample size, but we have also a wide confidence level, which is 98%. Uh, Any questions uh, about uh, this section, guys? So the difference between the two sections, in summary, they're bo in both, you will be asked to find the confidence interval for the mean. If he gives you sigma, you use Z interval. If he gives you S instead, guys, you use T interval. It is as simple as that. And now I'm going to show you guys, instead of using table five, how to find uh, the critical values TC without using table five, but using your calculator. Okay, let me show you this. Second. Okay, finding TC. Okay, we need a confidence level. Let's say the confidence level is 90% and N is 17. I'm going to show you how to do it both by using calculator and by using the table. Okay, using the table, guys, help me find it. 90% right here. And you don't look for 17, you look for degrees of freedom, 16. So what would that be, guys? Do you agree it's 1.746? Okay, that's TC. So degrees of freedom is 16, C is 90%, using table five, TC equals, oh, I forgot, what was it? Let me look again, 90% uh, and 16, 1.746. Using TI-84. Okay, get your calculator ready, guys. Clear, and we're gonna go. Second, 
distribute. Any guess? There's a screen, guys. It can't be inverse norm. Inverse norm is reserved for Z. When sigma is known, we use inverse norm. Do you see what comes after inverse norm? What does it say after three? Inverse T. Inverse T, and we're doing T distribution. It requires two values from you, area to the left and the area to the left of one tail. You do it exactly the same way as you do the Z, guys. So go second, variables, inverse T, and you need to do area to the left and then degrees of freedom. Let me show you the areas to the left, guys. This is the area to the left. You just do it exactly the same way as you did in Z. You have 90% uh, here. This is a minus TC. This is a plus TC. This is a 5% here. And this is a 5%. If you ask me how I got them, I subtract 90% from 100%. I got 10% divided by 2. So the area to the left, guys, will be a 5%. And degrees of freedom is 16. So again, you take the 90% subtracted from 100, you get 10% divided by two, you get 5%, exactly as you do the inverse norm. So 0 0.05 and degrees of freedom of 16. And enter guys, and just go paste. If it didn't show you this window, it just put inverse T 0 0.05 comma 16 and hit enter. And I should get a negative 1.746 guys. There you go, negative 1.746 if you round it to three decimal places. And uh, TC equals 1.746. Let's do one more. N is uh, 12. C is 94%. We need TC, which is inverse T. Okay, can a student tell me what the argument we have to put there? What goes in here, guys? No answer. The 11 and the... 11 goes here. Okay, and uh, 3%. Yes, 3%. Does everyone know the 3%, guys? It's 100% minus 94%, 6%, and then divide by 2, which is 3%. And TC, let's do it. It's not difficult, guys. It's just... Uh, uh, Matter of knowing exactly what what to or zero point three it should be zero point zero three and then eleven and here you go two point zero nine six when if you're asked to find a critical value in uh, the online if it doesn't put plus or minus for you just put the positive answer guys and that should be it because this is oh that's a plus here this will be a negative 2.906 here if this was a three percent and that will be 2.096 so you have two critical values with confidence intervals you always have uh, two critical values all right let's uh let me pause here Okay. Okay, so you just click here. Oh, it didn't do anything. Here you go now. Okay, do you guys see the uh, sheet with the data in it? 
okay now you need to sign in so sign in right here first of all in order to access that crunch you sign in and your username whatever you use for my math lab my stat lab you just do it and click on sign in okay here is uh, the data set and the first question i'm asking you to find the mean standard deviation median etc of the average final well what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna show you how you can do it you know for another column let's say the average gpa so you just go to stat summary statistics columns and uh, i'm gonna do average gpa so for you guys you're gonna do average final grade but i'm gonna do average gpa and just hit calculate compute okay look you get the mean you get the standard deviation you get the median you get the range you get the minimum you get the maximum you get q1 and q3 i'm also asking you inside the word document guys to copy and paste you know the output from stat crunch into your answers so you just can select them and control c and you go to your word, word document and control v and answer the question so this is how you this is how you find the mean and the median using stat crunch in another question guys i'm asking you to find to do a histogram of the average final but instead of doing the histogram for the average final i'm going to do it for the average gpa so i'm just going to go you go to applets and where does it say histogram here you go histogram with slides okay i'm gonna do it for the average gpa and just hit compute then i'm asking you later guys to change your bin width which is the class width let's say i ask you her to change it to 0 0.2 for example look you can move it guys watch 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 this is 0 0.2 and then i ask you after you do this comment on the shape of the distribution does it what do you think of this one does it look like a bell-shaped distribution guys yeah yeah so you just say mm -hmm. it's a bell-shaped distribution uh look yeah, it looks approximately it's not 100 percent perfect but it's approximately a bell-shaped uh distribution see look when you change the slider what happened so it's a nice opportunity to learn you know how to work with histogram and, and interact you know just with them look what that changed the starting point here okay so you need to make a comment you know just on the distribution what you see and again for this one you can copy and paste into your word document all the directions are given in uh, there then i ask you to do probably a box plot let me show you how to do the box plot guys it's very easy see where the box plot says here and then probably i'm asking you to do it for the average final so i'm going to do it for the gpa for you guys so let me see average gpa and if you want the box plot to be horizontal or vertical, you can uh, select that one. I'm going to do it horizontally and compute. There you go. There's a box plot. You see, it tells us that the data looks symmetric, as you can see. Same whisker from the left and from the right. The median is right in the middle. This is a Q1, this is a Q2, Q3, etc. So you can see uh, uh <clears throat> and i'm asking you also to copy and paste this into your project so it just copy and then paste it guys and let me now take you to uh take you to the actual assignment just one second i'm going to share a screen with you that's an email so this is how you access the data set i think that's the most important part for me because 
students do struggle sometimes of uh, with the data set. Um, uh, you see the second link after this is the assignment itself. You, so you just open it. You don't need to create a new document or nothing, guys. You just can dump, you know, the stuff from StatCrunch in there and answer the question and save it as your name and then submit the assignment. So I will do some more overview on this uh, on Wednesday. If you have any questions on Wednesday, let me know or let me know today and tomorrow uh, during office hours. Uh, for the remaining time, guys, I want to take advantage of the remaining time and do this activity. So I'm going to go to Socrative. This is going to tell me who's with us now still. an easy activity uh, get your calculator ready guys uh, we're gonna all right so October 19 okay You're gonna see the question feedback. Okay. I'm gonna start guys right now. So I'll, uh, I'll give you a second to, you need to enter BASI141C1 as your room number. And then, uh, Start answering the questions and let me share the screen with you. It's, I paste this one, so don't worry. I'll give you plenty of time to finish this activity. Let me just uh, try to share the screen. Sir, so we just answered these three questions, that's it? Uh, there are, I think, three or four. I don't remember how many. Yeah, once you're done, you're done. So find the critical value Z when the confidence level is 98%. So first of all, you need, it's, it's gonna be what inverse norm guys, and then you need to do what I taught you to do with the 98%, subtract from 100% and then divide by two, and then put that in the inverse norm, comma zero, comma one. I, I got an explanation there. Mr. Boz, you have a quick question. Mm -hmm. So for this, were we not supposed to round? For this one? Yeah, you round to two decimal places. It marked us wrong when... We I did that. Really? Yeah. Let me see what the answer is. No, you should round it properly. Let me see it. Just one second. I'm going to do it. Unless if I put the wrong, uh, mark the wrong uh, answer as a correct answer. Let me see. Okay. Well, which answer did you choose? I did C, but it told me the correct answer is A. Same. No, it is C. Yeah. I'll fix it, guys. It is C, yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Thank you. No, oh, I have to go and fix. So I'm not going to send you a report right away, guys, now, because I have to fix this. Now, guys, tell me something. Can you move to the next question or you can't? You're waiting for me. Waiting. Okay, good. I just want to make sure that this feature works the way it, is, it does. Okay, guys, 10 more seconds. I have two students who are not active. They're with us, but they're not there. Okay, I'm gonna go to next. Come on guys, quickly, one more, please. Next. Find the sample mean X bar given the confidence interval. And here's the explanation. 
I mean, guys, just participate. All you need to do and just get a good uh, mark in here because I, I don't intend to assess you here. I just support you and review what we did. So to find X bar when you have an interval, just add up the boundaries and divide by two, guys. As simple as that. Okay, I will stop the recording here so we don't have uh, to make, you know, this video longer than it is. <laughs>